Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, a meteorologist, DT, from WeatherRest.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, and we have another edition of another snowstorm coming up this week, it looks like, after a pretty, um, you know, mild interval here for the second half of December and going into the first week of January. So the pattern is changing, let's get right to it, a lot to talk about. First, you know, sorry I wanted this thing up by 11 o'clock, just all sorts of chaos going on behind the scenes here. Anyhow, so let's take a look at it. Um, one of the things we want to point out here is the MJO pattern, because that helps drive the overall pattern. So uh, we can start by taking a look here, actually. Now, these are the latest projections from the MJO. So right here on the left-hand side, we have the uh, GFS corrected the bias. Uh, so this is the better GFS model here. And here we have the Canadian model, and here we have the European model. And look at the green line. You see what the green line does? It's in phase eight. We now we now are in phase eight. There we are right here. You can see it right here. That's where we are. Go into phase eight, then the neutral circle, which is this circle right here. And all the models do that. See what they do? They hook it in there. They don't go into phase one and phase two. And then they go neutral circle. And then they turn to the north again. So it might be that it goes back out into phase six briefly, or it might be that uh, is going to come back out in a different phase completely. So this is a little tricky part of the forecast here. Uh, as you get to the end of January, you have to see where this thing, where the MGO comes out. I mean, if it comes out in phase four or five again, that would be another warm pattern. So we don't want that. But it might hook back out into seven, eight, or one. They might do that again. And indeed, this is what some of the models are showing. The experimental um, CFS here ensemble uh, MJO clearly shows that it does that. As you can see, it goes into phase one and actually just clips a little bit of phase one here in late January. Then it hooks back into the circle. You see what it does here. And then it looks like it wants to come back out again as they go into the, uh, uh, the heart of February. So that would be interesting. That would be a pretty prolonged winter cycle here for February if that were to happen. A lot of speculation there. Now, the phase seven pattern, of course, we're now out of phase seven. We'll go into phase eight. And that's what this one is here. And it's okay for January. You know, phase eight is not great. Uh, there's a pretty, you know, a strong negative anomaly here on the West Coast, which goes all the way into the deep south. Then we have this bit of a ridge up here. The notice is not strong blocking up in here. We're not saying that. Not yet. It's mostly up in the Northwest Canada area. So we have this big southern jet stream bringing the systems in. And then they run into this little bit of a ridge here in New England. And they kind of like fall apart here. So phase eight is okay in in. January it's not great for the overall pattern so uh, and that's it, that's gonna help so that's gonna set up the thing here for this weekend now this is the surface map this afternoon this evening you can see we have two lows here uh, this one and then this one and they're both going to consolidate into a big system here and that of course will drag the cold front you know completely through the East Coast here on Tuesday Wednesday and we can see that um, very nicely here this is uh, Wednesday afternoon, you can see these strong winds. The month, if you look at the big storm up in the Gulf of Maine. You see this here, not a very nice system. And you can see these howling winds. Oops, uh, that winds are really coming down here 40, 50, 40 miles an hour, and here maybe 50 miles an hour gusts up in there. Uh, so, pretty impressive day Wednesday into Thursday, Wednesday night as well. And if you look at a large scale, there it is. This is called pressure gradient. I'm sure some of you know the term. There, here's the low, and here's the big semi Arctic high. So the, the gradient between here and here is pretty intense, and you can see the strong northwest winds bringing the cold air in. So finally, real blast of cold air in here is winter makes a return. Okay. The temperature, as you can see, what happens here on Thursday and Friday morning. Now, this is important because, you know, it's been pretty mild here for the last couple of weeks. We've had some warm days, and, you know, for, January, for December, early January. And the ground temperatures are pretty warm. But if we get temperatures this cold on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning, I did not post the Saturday temperatures, but I could. Uh, they're almost as cold as what we see on Thursday and Friday. Uh, a lot of areas you can see in the uh, central Virginia, away from the coast, central North Carolina, Maryland, mid-20s, low-20s in the Piedmont and northwest North Carolina, and some teens along the Shenandoah Valley, eastern portions of West Virginia, western Maryland. Now, the dew point's even lower. If you look at the dew points on Saturday morning when this whole event begins to start, dew points are around nine single digits in much of Virginia, Maryland, around 10 in North Carolina. So the air is going to be really cold Saturday for a long period of time when this system starts. So that's going to help keep the precipitation uh, initially uh, frozen. No doubt about that. All right. Now, this is what got everybody excited here. This is the Sunday afternoon. This was Sunday's 
okay, 18Z GFS. And what it did was, you see the first low is here, you see this, okay, and there's the second low back here. So here's Virginia getting the snow, only Hampton Roads has rain, North Carolina has rain, but the Delmarva, D.C., Maryland, up into Philly have snow, West Virginia have snow. Then that low leaves, and another low forms behind it, and you get this other big snowstorm here. So, of course, this is just complete bullshit. You're not going to get the solution at all. It's absurd, but it got everybody all excited because that's what that's what that's what it does. And um, you can even see the storm here uh, for a week, uh, January 14th, uh, Monday. Uh, you can see off the Hatteras Coast, huge snowstorm in East North Carolina, Central and East Virginia, Delmarva, and you've got yet yeah, big snows. Uh, you can see that the, the snow map here, uh, very very impressive looking stuff here. Of course, like I said, this is not going to happen. It's just it is, and we'll see why in a minute. All right, now this is the 12Z Monday uh, GFS here. And uh, what it does is you can see uh, this takes a Saturday night and then it's a Sunday morning. And you see we have two lows here, right? Uh, this is your primary low here in the Kentucky. Let me call it my marker here. This is your primary low here. And there's your secondary low here. The problem is that the high is kind of far to the north, which is way up here off the map on this model run of the GFS. So when this low dies off, this one takes over, and you can see it goes over between Richmond and Norfolk, and that's way too far north. So that's snow going to rain in Richmond, uh, it's, and then even to D.C., Baltimore, Philly, Dover, southern New Jersey, all the way up into New York City. Now, uh, the snow is pretty good in, in, in the Shenandoah Valley, then it goes to ice, and up in D.C. has snow to ice, and then Western and Central Maryland, West Virginia, Western Pennsylvania, New York State, Southern New England, all snow in here. But you can see this low is way too far inland. And uh, what the GFS is doing, you can see it quite clearly here. Uh, again, this was the um, uh, this is the 18Z GFS, which is a little different, but about the same. What it does is, uh, there is your main piece of energy in the southern jet stream, okay? So let's highlight this. So this is your southern jet stream here. Got it? And a little piece of it goes here. And then this is your Arctic jet stream here. So there's a piece of energy here in this bend. And what happens is that the GFS is trying to merge these two systems into one big system, which produces a moderate-sized snowstorm. You can see that the northern branch, and the kind of, they kind of meet here on Sunday night. You get that sort of configuration. Now, you'll see in the European, other models don't do that. And that's why they have a different system. So... This was the 12Z GFS snow map. And you can see, again, from this to that. And notice that everything, like this is Richmond right here, uh, right there. So everything south and east of Richmond would be like almost all rain or just a little bit of ice in here. And then north and west of Richmond, you're 7 inches Charlottesville, you know, 10 in Culpeper, 8, 10 inches, 11 inches in D.C. Now, again, this is all sleet. Some of this includes sleet here as well. And as remember, on the 12Z GFS, the Monday afternoon, there was sleet in this thing. So, you know, keep that in mind. This is not all snow. All right. Now, the, here's the GFS Ensemble. And as you can see, let me enlarge this here a little bit for you. Um, it does not have that phase. Notice the northern branch comes down this way, and the southern branch is doing this. Okay, but there's no phase in here. There's no merging. So as a result, the low pressure area goes much further to the east, and it's much colder. And we can see that here. So you take a look at that, and you compare it to this. You can see the big difference. So now here's the GFS ensemble. As you can see, uh, the 12Z run, um, the red, red line shows the rain snow area. You can see you know, ice in northwest North Carolina. But it's not a big deal. It, the precipitation is fairly light. It's snow, definitely, from much of Virginia. Hampton Roads looks like snow going to rain on this model. Um, Richmond's all snow, Charlottesville, but Lynchburg, Farmville, D.C., so up to all, all the way up to Philly and Jersey, but it's not a huge deal. Now this is the Canadian model, 12Z Canadian model, and here the Canadian, as you can see, is absolutely bonkers, which is why the model is not very good. Uh, you can see it's got big, giant southern system here and a gigantic upper low here. But what happens is that they, they don't meet. This northern branch here comes down this way, and this does this. So these do not phase. There's no phasing here at all. And because there's no phasing, the southern energy just stays by itself. Now, it ends up getting a snow to ice in central Virginia. You have rain over the DeMarva all the way up to Jersey, uh, well, most of North Carolina. And then the Shenandoah Valley is all snow, maybe the Virginia Piedmont as well, up into central Maryland. And you can see it. It's, it's, it goes this to this, this, and then this. So you can see it's a decent system. It's pretty impressive, but 
There's a lot of rain on the coast as well. Like I said, I think the, the, this solution by the Canadians nonsense. But um, this here is the Canadian uh, snowfall map. As you can see, it's got several inches of snow in central Virginia, Roanoke, Charlottesville, up towards D.C. Not a huge deal, but some. And not much south and east of Norfolk, I mean, of Richmond. All of Hampton Roads is completely, you know, you can see it's almost snow-free. So is most of the Delmarva and most of central and eastern North Carolina, according to the Canadian model. Again, I don't think that's correct. All right. Now, this is the European model, and I'll show you what the European model does in a second here. Okay, so here we have the European model from uh, Monday afternoon. And what it has is you have one area of low pressure here and another one here. And you have an inverted trough and an inverted trough. So, you know, very weak funnel system. It's not a big deal. It's snow. It's just not a lot of it. So this was the 0Z Monday uh, uh, European. You can see, you know, one, two, three inches of a lot of the areas, northwestern North Carolina, Shenandoah Valley, Kentucky, up towards D.C., Delmarva, that sort of thing. Now, the afternoon update has a little heavier snow. As you can see, you're getting a little more concentration of the snow here. And then, uh, you know, a little more one to two inches into Richmond and areas in Charlottesville. Again, but not a big deal. And I don't think this is going to be that big of a deal. I, I mean, maybe the, maybe the Ge Europeans will to drive the moisture here. That's possible. It could pick up some. Um, you know, it's possible you could get something like a four to eight inch type of snow. That's not out of the question for some areas. All right. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Now, this is the European the surface map again and this precipitation type. As you can see, it's not a big deal. It's a wave of low pressure, giving some snow, eh, you know, some snow and ice in central North Carolina. That's about it. Now, this here is the 18Z GFS. Now, what I want to point out here is, OK, then now pay attention to this. This is the 12Z run here. OK, see where the low was? You remember it was over between Norfolk and, and, and Hatteras? I mean, Norfolk and Richmond, see where it is? Now, this is the 18Z run here. Val, the exact same time, look where the low is. Yeah, significantly further south. And not surprisingly, all the Mid-Atlantic is much colder. North Carolina is much colder. Richmond is much colder. Uh, more snow here, D.C., Charlottesville. It's a, it's a much further to the south system, so it has implications. And there it is. You can see it, you know, enlarged here if you wanted. You can see it's a much colder setup. And also the other difference is look at the Arctic high here on the 18Z. 1044. If this high is here, this means the low is going to stay much further to the south. Okay. This is an enormous high that will force this low to the south. Okay. So this idea of the low coming up through Richmond into D.C., that's not going to happen. This low is going to stay to the south because of this gigantic high, if that's correct. And, and we can see it on the other models as well. Uh, you, know, you can go back and take a look and see the giant high here as well uh, oh, to, you know, over Montreal or in southeastern Canada. All right. Um, and then we look at the snowfall map on the GFS. Wow, look at that, baby. Again, this, some of this is sleet, as you can see here. Okay, some of this is sleet, but it looks like a decent snowstorm. So, you know, so, you know, obviously this southwest Virginia, northwest North Carolina, the snow is going to get in there first. And once it gets in there early, they're going to hold their wedge longer. So, uh, you know, they could have pretty good snow in this area. But, you know, the, like I said, the 18Z does have decent snow up to this far. And then the low slides off the coast. So this area gets screwed again out of the snow. So. We'll see if that happens. Um, and if we can see it in uh, higher resolution here, this is the 12Z GFS, and then um, you know you can see it was much further to the north. Now, this was the other image I wanted to show you. Is this is the 18Z uh, GFS ensemble the, in terms of the precipitation. So if we look at our color guide, the edge of the blue and the green right here, see this? That is a half inch. So that's a good mark. You can clearly see the difference here. So all this is about a half inch to, from about 0.5 to 0.75 so not a super wet storm but not nothing a decent size event and again if that was all snow that could be 48 or 6 to 10 inches of snow depending on the air mass so you know it's 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 something and then um this is the uh zero z uh brand new gfs has just come in and again we can see uh it's about the same as the other ones Notice that the low here, the GFS, has again shifted the low a little further to the north. Um, let me call this map here so you can see it. Uh, there you go. I'm going to call this map. There you go. You can see it here. And what it, it's, it's um, 
there you can see the low here is a little further to the north. Again, it's inland. A little further, not as, as far earlier. So you have snow and sleet and rain in Richmond and Central Virginia. North and west, it stays all snow. It starts off with snow, as you can see, in all of Virginia and west of North Carolina and West Virginia. Um, and then it goes over. And it obviously goes very quickly in Hampton Roads and Central and East of North Carolina and the Delmarva. Uh, it depends on where this low goes. If this low is further south, then the rain snow lines further south. So uh, at this point, I, should, I don't know. It's impossible to say where it's going to be. Whether it's going to be Richmond or Patuxent River, Charlottesville, or whether it's going to be Richmond, Salisbury, or let's say uh, uh, Emporia to uh, uh, Wild Island. I have no idea. I, I, at this point, it's impossible to, to know for certain. Now, if you look at the snow amounts on uh, the 0Z, it's very similar to what we saw here with uh, the 18Z. There's the 18Z. There's the 0Z. Now, the one difference is it has more snow north of the North Carolina, uh, the Pennsylvania Maryland border. So more snow up in this area. So there you go. That's a possibility. Now, longer term, let's take a look longer term here for a second on the models. This is a weekly CFS, which came out on Sunday. And you can see this is what takes us to January 19th to 25. Look at the dates up in here. There you go. You can see this enormous ridge here on the west coast. Deep, deep trough here. So this is a very cold looking pattern here, not particularly stormy. Uh, this pattern here, January 26th to February 1st, uh, strong Pacific jet, a lot of storms here, blocking here, blocking here, colds, a very strong cold supply. This could be a very stormy period, if this is correct, the last week of January. And then um, this is uh, the first week of, this is February 9th to the 15th. And uh, this one here in the upper left looks really awesome. Huge blocking here. Strong ridge there. A very cold looking pattern. And this takes us mid February 16th to the 22nd. The vortex comes further to the south. An enormous negative Arctic oscillation and the NAO here. Uh, very, very cold air mass possible in the east coast here in mid early February, if that's correct. And it goes even beyond that because this takes us into, um, yeah. Now we'll take us to the European model. Now the European weeklies, a lot of people are talking about this one on the January 22nd. Obviously there's a big short wave right here, but we don't, the blocking isn't really here. It's not up in the Greenland. So uh, that's I'm a little questionable about that. Obviously there's something there and we have a nice ridge here and a supply of cold air. So could be something on the East Coast here around the 21st or 22nd. Not an ideal pattern, but not horrible either. And then further out in time, the pattern just says very active, very cold. All right, the upper left image is, is February 3rd. The bottom one is February uh, 9th. And again, we can see uh, very strong blocking here. Really strong signals of blocking. Very pronounced short waves, pieces of energy here. So all of these could be possible East Coast storms or threats for East Coast storms. And then finally, um, again, um, this I, I think the last image was February 9th. Yeah, that was my last image. And um, in summary, let me just that it's important that we don't use the December 9th uh, snowstorm, which was a busted forecast for so many people, as a excuse to overdo this one. Uh, each event is different. You know, uh, one of the things that I used to do was umpire baseball and softball. And, you know, you get a tendency when you're a rookie umpire is that if you miss that call, then you feel like you owe that team something. So then you uh, start uh, finding a way to give it back to them with a questionable call to the other team. And, and then you go back and forth and you get trapped in your own, you know, logic there, your own convoluted thinking. Same thing with weather forecasts and snowstorms or hurricanes or whatever it is. Um, you know, each event is different. And just because you got the last one right doesn't mean you get this one right. From what I can see, this looks like a light to moderate event. It's possible that if the QPF is heavier, like the GFS is showing, it could be more 4 to 8 or 6 to 10 inch snowfall. But that's the top line from what I see. It could easily be 1 to 2 inch snowfall for everybody. So uh, let's, uh, well, that's my forecast right now for this week in weather. And I'll probably do another one of these videos, I think, uh, on Wednesday, and then maybe another one on Friday. So we'll see how it goes. This is meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.